salutations, my fellow food lovers. This is Chef Mark here from Johnny's Italian Steakhouse, and I want to tell you about our filet Oscar. This premium filet is topped with Johnny's lump crab cake, grilled asparagus, and our signature Bernays sauce. But the start to any great night always begins with a killer appetizer. And I recommend trying out our jumbo pan-seared sea scallops with Brussels sprout slaw tossed in Johnny's hot bacon dressing. It is so good. I know that you will love my filet Oscar as much as I love preparing it. So come to Johnny's tonight. Johnny's Italian Steakhouse, Village Point Shopping Center, Omaha. Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. Come on. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of We Should Be Better at This. I am Eric Lecky. Yeah, you are. Yes, I am. <laughs> but, oh, oh, am I supposed to say something else beside that? You are. You're supposed to introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, hey, sorry. Hey, you know what? It's a good thing this is our test run, and we're not recording, right? Oh, no, yeah, we're never recording. I mean, we're always recording. Okay, good. That's what I meant. We're always <laughs> recording. <laughs> What's going on? My name is Chris Donovan. Uh, do me a favor, go to thisisfunner.com. Uh, or follow me on Twitter, Chris underscore Donovan. Uh, we got a show for you today. We definitely do. I'm at uh, Sinatra's Rat Pack on Twitter if you feel so inclined. Uh, I love how, uh, you know, you always pick something quite appropriate. I love how you started today's show with uh, Kobe Bryant's rap song that he put out in the uh, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, that was uh, definitely a song. Yes, it was. It, it, was, was, it was high quality. It was released out into the general public. We'll leave it at that. Don't make fun of a dead guy song. <laughs> he made a conscious decision. Uh, that's the worst uh, Kobe Bryant news of the day, his uh, rap song. Yeah, what's th- that's the worst? That's the worst. That's the oh, worst. Oh, I mean, if you want to factor in this whole, like, him dying in a horrible, fiery crash with his 13-year-old daughter and her schoolmates. But, you know, besides that, the rap album is the low point. Technically, you're right, because you said today, and that happened a couple days ago. Ah, excellent point. So you're good. So, yeah, I'm sure everyone heard the news. This is kind of nationwide news, not just in our little neck of the woods of the Los Angeles, Southern California area. But uh, Kobe Bryant uh, kicking the bucket was pretty big news. Um, and just an absolutely just kind of, tr- you know, there's tragic things happen all the time. Yeah. You know, I, last year, you know, the angels lost, uh, Tyler Skaggs, the pitcher to a, to a, a opioid, uh, overdose. But I think this one for some reason strikes as different because someone had brought up the excellent point that literally all of the greatest players in the history of the NBA, except for Wilt Chamberlain is still alive. Like oh, wow. when they do that top 50 players of all time, they are except for Wilt Chamberlain. They are all alive except for now Kobe Bryant, who was like just so recent. He just fell uh, felt so recently a star. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and one thing that, that got me about it all is that I was looking at the year he was born, this, the year I was born. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I'm the same age as Kobe Bryant, uh, I, you know, and he just died. So it, uh, it's crazy to think that because it's just so young. It is, and, and you know, it wasn't just about the the uh, uh, how young he was, even though that was odd. Because when yeah, I was looking at that too, I was like, oh, that's really close to. <laughs> it's really <laughs> close. I know it's when you were born. It's really close to when I was born. But yeah. it's not just about that. I think that the tragic thing is is how much of a mentor he was to other stars in the league and in other sports too. I mean, you're really seeing a. Um, an outpouring of uh, kind of tributes from all these other sports and other cities. I mean, I found it odd that, you know, New York hates L.A., right? Yeah. But they lit up Madison Square Garden in purple and gold. Uh, they lit up uh, in Boston. I mean, talk about a city that hates Los wow. Angeles and hates Kobe Bryant. But they still lit up parts of the city in purple and gold. And I just thought that was like, wow, that's really how you know you've crossed over uh, in in kind of uh, legend status and icon status when your rival cities are like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we got to like do a tribute. Yeah, no, it, it, it's true. I mean, he had his issues when he was playing in the NBA with his you know wife and things, but that's all their personal business, you know, Um I know that there was some other other shit that went down, but he you was writing books. He was writing kids books. Um, 
Uh, I was about to meet him last year because uh, he was going to jump on one of these podcasts with uh, Andy. Um, I can't remember his name, but uh, he is a photographer for the Lakers who knew him very well. He was going to come on his podcast for him. So I almost got to meet him, but I didn't. Um, but everything I heard about him is everything he was doing was was all for like family and, and, and good, good things, you know. He was a big under the table guy. Like he didn't, um, he didn't want a lot of the press for what he did. He had a a standing order with the Lakers, or when he would visit a city, right? So a lot of times these teams work together. Uh, uh, you know, you, for instance, you know he's going to Phoenix to play the Phoenix Suns. Let's say there's some kid who has a Make a Wish Foundation. He doesn't call the Lakers. He calls the Phoenix Suns, and then they say, you know, oh, can you arrange for so and so and so and so and so? The Kobe Kobe Bryant. Oh, his rule of thumb always was no press, no PR. Uh, he did not want this to be a, a public image kind of a thing. And and I really respect that because I think that makes it less about him and more about um, the person he's visiting. But you had mentioned his his kind of uh, uh, personal uh, problems that he had. And, and honestly, to be fair – in his entire career, even when he was a young kid, he really didn't have any problems. It was literally just this one problem uh, in Colorado where he was accused of rape. But, you know, when you revisit that story, I mean, I hate to re, you know, relitigate. I mean, this guy's dead, but I don't really buy the accuser story on it. I mean, just got to be honest. That one smelled fishy. Um, I, I thought, you know, it, it spoke a lot how quickly he was acquitted of charges. A lot of stuff came out about the accuser. And, you know, listen, it, it not he still did something wrong, but I don't think it's as egregious as what people are um, kind of remembering it by. If they really remember the case, it was like this lady was pretty sketchy. She decided after the fact that it was rape, it was consensual at the time yeah. and then decided later on that it was rape after talking to her boyfriend about it, who then convinced her she should report it as a rape. And then she hired a criminal attorney first to go after him for money. I mean, there's a lot of like pretty shady things that happened there yeah I, I agree with you um he did make a mistake he did have some problems but, oh big a big one but that a big but, one yeah but but that that uh that that was money sign that was dollar signs flashing in her boyfriend's eyes that's all that was do you do you think that i mean obviously in, a, in an accident like this you, you can't really blame anyone i mean this is just a freak thing but do you think that the family members of the other people that were in the accident secretly blame kobe because i remember the one quote that did come out so far was where someone who knew the uh, one of the mother and daughter combinations that was in the plane uh, in the helicopter said oh they would have never taken a helicopter they would have always driven but kobe offered them a ride do you think they're kind of like secretly like maybe under their breath going gee Jesus, you know, if, if Kobe didn't have to be the rich guy flying people everywhere, they would have driven in a car. They would still be alive. Um, I'm sure there's some of those thoughts out there. Probably, you know, from I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there are some out there. But but honestly, uh, wouldn't you go in a helicopter? I would totally, especially because this is like one of them. Really, this is not some like little sheriff's department one. This is like a state of the art, high tech helicopter. I would have absolutely gone in. It. Yeah, it didn't work out so well, though. Yeah. That, that Speaking of, uh, the one thing that this – good. No, I was just going to say it didn't work out so well on that high-tech helicopter that's all luxurious. It's um, it's kind of not working anymore. Yeah, apparently there's <laughs> not enough tech. Yeah, apparently there's not enough tech. Uh, they, they forgot to install the anti-crash tech uh, into the uh, helicopter. That was going to be installed next week. Shit, that's on my Kia. How come they don't have it in a helicopter? So one thing that brought me out about this – too was uh, a lot of the new the, the news reporting and the media outlets and how they reported the story in my opinion was just handled so poorly i mean first of all you have tmz uh leaking the story before the family members could even be notified yes uh two of the families said that they learned about it on a tmz alert rather than from the police or or, or any uh, um, agency which that that seems really shitty i mean that's that's such a crappy thing to do and then you had reporters just get they were in such a rush to be first, that they didn't worry about being right. I mean, ABC News this morning just suspended Matt Gutman, one of their national reporters, because he was one of the people that reported all four of his children were on the plane. Oh my God, he or on the helicopter. Oh, hoo, 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 idiot. Man. Which doesn't even make sense because one of his children is seven months old. So uh, that doesn't make sense on why a seven-month-old would be on that helicopter. Uh, uh, but that's how that reporting went. And then they originally said. 
Kobe died alone. None of his family members were with him. And then they had the wrong daughter. Yeah. One of the outlets reported the wrong daughter. And then the other person said it was just Kobe and the daughter. No one else was on the helicopter. Then they had to change it to add other people. And then they had the wrong number of people. And honestly, it's just such a failure of reporting. It's just very disappointing. You know what's even more disappointing is that guy, that one guy where it's like Kobe and his daughter, plus some friends and some other kids, and an unnamed pilot. Like, <laughs> who's this guy? Well, like, this, this guy's like ignored in the entire thing, like, and the unnamed pilot that nobody cares about because all the other people that on no the yes. <laughs> Like, like <laughs> I mean, unless he caused the crash, which I don't know if they could figure that out, but still, this unnamed pilot. Poor guy unnamed by have you ever have you ever been in a plane or a helicopter that you thought w was going down um no 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 i can't say i have i've been on a plane one time where we hit some really rough turbulence and we started dropping altitude and the oxygen masks popped out which freaked everyone out but that's about as close as we got uh but uh that's got to be a pretty i mean depending on how much notice you get like is this a free fall and you have a minute and a half to realize you're dying or is this uh you realize it you know five seconds before you hit the ground and you don't even really have time to brace yourself i mean I, you kind of i mean i don't know what happened in this particular case but i think that it it depends on that but that was the only experience i had was the oxygen mass dr uh, dropping yeah no uh what what flight do you remember what uh, what airline that was when the oxygen masks fell yeah, it was a Southwest flight because I even remember making the joke to my seatmate that we're lucky that they didn't make uh, – Southwest is so cheap. They're, we're lucky that they didn't make us all share one mask per row. <laughs> Did you? I was figured there was probably some people on there screaming pretty loud when those popped down. Oh, there was. There's Especially the, the – the, there was a lot of kids that were really freaking out uh, uh, and then some uh, – so, women always scream. I, I hate I hate screamers, but uh, – Oh, well, I mean, depends on the scenario. Let's be true. Well, the, it depends on what room you're in in the house. But <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it was a pretty scary moment. But I just I've talked to a lot of people. And, you know, I flew a lot for uh, for work o over the years. And I, I'm actually surprised it didn't happen more often. Yeah, no. And I flew a lot quite a bit for work uh, a couple different times for jobs. And, and, I've, and I moved to California and I flew back to Washington a ton of times when I'm, you know, since I've moved down here and. And uh, I mean, not not anything that stands out. I mean, I love flying, so not a whole lot bothers me. Yeah, I hate you know, it's funny. The flying part isn't what bothers me. It's the damn airport part. It's the yeah. getting in the airport, waiting for your plane and then getting out of the airport at your destination. If, if you could eliminate those three things, I could fly all the damn time. That doesn't bother me. Um, question. I was going to ask you, do you have any, uh, uh, like top Kobe memories? Is there anything that kind of stands out for you that is a uh, kind of symbolic of, uh, what you think of when you think of Kobe Bryant? Oh no. Uh, Kobe Bryant. Yes. Oh, actually I do have a really, really good story. Um, when Kobe was going through all that garbage, uh, with his wife and cheating and all that stuff, uh, everybody, not everybody knows, but as most people know my wife is a morning show radio personality and she does the entertainment buzz. And she was reporting on that, and she was saying how she thinks that, oh, yeah, Kobe's guilty uh, because of this girl, and, like, the story was just fresh. So, so she was giving her opinion on it. Well, Kobe Bryant called his friend, who just happens to be Evelyn's boss. And he said, can you do me a favor and tell that morning chick to stop talking about my wife? And I said, oh, no. I said, Kobe Bryant listens to your radio station? <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking about it, babe. Keep talking about it. <laughs> exactly. I, I mean, uh, you just accomplished the opposite. I'm like, hey, sweeps week. <laughs> it was quite funny. They, her boss called her and was like, I don't know really what to tell you, but he called us. I'm like, she's like, okay, I'll talk about it more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was that's, message received. Understood. That's, that's probably my the the closest run I've had with Kobe Bryant, not counting like just running him to him at like games and shit. Yeah. You know, the, the one that stands out for me, you know, and I mean, of course, you know, there's the 81 points and there's the championships and there's the parades in L.A., which I I've gone to two of the Lakers championships. Oh, yeah. He did all that. All too. That. But yeah, he did it all that, too. But I'll tell you, the, the one that stands out for me uh, the most is it was very late in his career. I think it was uh, uh, about maybe two seasons before he retired. And he's going up the court and it's late in the game and the Lakers are trying to make the playoffs and Kobe collapses on the floor and he knows it right away that he tore his Achilles 
And as someone who tore my own Achilles and I oh. never have quite recovered 100 percent, I know what that feeling was like. But one thing I don't understand, I don't think anyone can understand is what had to be going through Kobe's mind at that point. Because think about it. He was older. He knew he was getting towards the end. And then you just re- tear your Achilles and you're thinking to yourself, this is it. And he even admitted later, he said, I thought that that was the last moment I was going to be on a floor. No send off, no farewell tour, just an injury and I'm out and I'm never back. But what I remember about that moment and what I think is just so inspiring to me, and it's just something that stuck with me, is he didn't grimace. He didn't say a thing. He didn't even let on how injured he was. He walked up to the free throw line and sunk perfect swish, two of his free throws. Then he walked off the court. And as he's walking off the court, he mentions to the bench, he, he like makes the waving sign at his throat like, I'm done, I'm out. And uh, the trainer said, what's the matter? And he says, my career's done. I'm out. And he just walked off the floor. And that moment of he he had to go from realizing that he's that injured, thinking this is it, this is the end. But he still had that wherewithal to go, no, I got to sink these two free throws because we're in a playoff hunt. Like we got to make the playoffs. And it was like the end of the game. And, and in my opinion, that was, I think that, uh, you know, we've all heard the words Mamba mentality over the past week so much because it defined Kobe. And I think that was just that perfect moment that that sticks with me of, you know, how hard is it to know that a tragic event just struck your career, but I have that you have the wherewithal to just stick with it and and finish that play. Or I mean, that's like that's like someone tearing their hamstring on the hundred meter dash, but still finishing and winning the damn race, you know, and then being hurt afterwards. That's like that gymnast that broke her foot or whatever and still ended up executing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty cool. It's uh, what I what right. I, it's I, a, it's that iconic moment. Yeah, no, I mean, he he was a great player, is one of the top five players of all time. Uh, but I think it's funny how your story is like, oh, my God, he was so amazing. He did this. He got hurt. He had to realize it. I'm like, bitch, called to talk <laughs> shit to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you would have talked shit to my wife, I would have led with that story too. Um, hey, the other big news for, well, at least for me, and it's not really big news. I haven't really accomplished anything yet, but I've been taking uh, the Jeopardy uh, challenge uh, test to try and be on the show. I've been trying to get on uh, Jeopardy for about 10 years. I try every single year. This will represent the farthest I've ever gotten. So I guess that's good news. Uh, but I got past the level three round of testing. And uh, I, I'm I'm going for it, man. I, I've I've wanted to be on the show for a long time, ever since I was a kid. Now, did you do the uh, the you did what time did you do testing yesterday? Because it was what, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, what are you counting off the start of a song? No, five, six, seven, eight. No, I got uh, this. I got an email. No. I got an email yesterday because I've been trying to do the testing for this also, and it's sitting there telling me what times today, tomorrow, or the last two days for testing. So I didn't go that route because I, I'm actually going through uh, uh, being on the show. So this is the their um, open casting call or open call. Ah. Um, I was actually selected uh, uh, before this because I've been testing since uh, December. So I, I took my first round of tests in December and they give you a simple 30 question test. And they're really, really hard questions. I mean, these are not cupcakes. They're, they're pretty tough. And you have to get 35 out of, excuse me, uh, 25 out of 30 to even move on. Um, I actually scored a perfect 30 out of 30, I, I, 100%. Uh, and then level two was 50 questions. And um, so that one I did really good on two. And then for level three, they do it with the, you, you got to do it with a clicker and everything. You got to have the clicker in hand wow. and, and uh, practice with that. So no, I didn't do the open casting call t- testing that they, they've been advertising. I've been uh, going through it. Um, I guess you, I, I don't know what you call it. The old fashioned way, the, the traditional way of getting on the show. Probably the only um, way to get on the show. This is probably just garbage to make people feel better. It, it's probably <laughs> a little bit of a marketing ploy. What they'll probably do from this testing is pick like 10 to 15 people. And then the, it's just all marketing. Uh, cause I mean, and, and so the next round, if I, if I, if they select me for round four of testing, uh, you're with other contestants with the buzzer. And so you do like essentially a, a mock game in the Burbank studios and you, okay. you kind of compete that way. I was on once upon a, who wants to be a millionaire, a Disney, uh, California adventure once. <laughs> I don't know if that counts. 
damn it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was. I'm. I'm no, going. To, maybe. Well, wait. You were on. You were on one versus one hundred, though, weren't you? I never got to go to the filming because I had to go out of town for work. But I am on a uh, episode if they air it, uh, coming up in April or May of uh, Let's Make a Deal. Oh well, fantastic. Yeah, I, I remember when you were taping that. I am. Uh, I taped an episode of who of uh, one versus one hundred, and they never used it. What What did you do? Did you pee on someone or something? No, um, I don't know why they didn't use it. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, I have no clue why they didn't use it, but they, they sent me a message that it will not be used. This is like years ago. Uh, and they sent me a message saying, uh, we, we decide we shoot a lot of episodes and we only use, you know, so many per season and we chose not to use your episode, which means they didn't have to pay you your prize, which means they did not have to pay me my prize. My prize was really low though. It was like, um, I think after taxes, it was like forty five hundred dollars or five thousand or something like that wow. but yeah i did not get paid no see they probably did that and told that to everybody so they could just get the show on the air they didn't have any prize yeah. money they just lied to everyone it's probably happened before <laughs> it's, we, a, it's like a ponzi scheme right <laughs> it's yes. literally the pyramid game show <laughs> Uh, so I wanted to ask I, – exactly. It's a pyramid game. Hey, that's a great idea. A game show where it's all a scam. Yeah. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Well, there's lots of them probably. <laughs> the there lottery? <laughs> we'll, call it the, the, we'll call it the Nigerian Prince game show. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Uh, hey, so I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm scared to death about this uh, coronavirus uh, from from China. And, of course, you know the only thing that goes with the coronavirus is uh, Lyme disease. Of course. But – of course. But uh, I have – so so China is traditionally quite secretive. They do not let anything out, and they never admit fault. So my big fear is this thing is – if it's bad enough to where it's actually making the news, that to me is really bad because China keeps everything secret. And we all know when the zombie apocalypse happens, it's going to start in China. Well, I don't know. It's It might start in Riverside right across the street from my house. This, they have like a quarantine area out here at March Air Force Base, and I'm literally two miles away from it. Wow. But, yeah, I, I did hear that they I hear that they had a plane that was going to be landing from China and they like literally told it to turn around and go home. They actually yeah, they did. They did. And then they brought another one, a small one or something in uh, it coming. It came to March Air Force Base. It was supposed to go to Ontario, from what I understand, uh, but it got diverted yeah. over to March Air Force Base because the military wanted to control it. Either way, no. well, I, okay. either way, I don't live in Corona, so I should be good. I don't think there's a Riverside virus. <laughs> it is, but it's just uh, you get like a lot of dirt in your hair and a tumbleweed blows under your car or something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm insulting where you live. I know you okay, are, but so, I, at least I own my uh, house. Yeah, oh, you son of a bitch. Uh, it, and, it, it's and it's all right. Own... Uh, I, I'm independently wealthy. I just choose to live this lifestyle because I don't want to – I want to be you know a man of the people. Um, do you remember a few weeks ago we talked about is it necessary to have a ring doorbell? Yeah. Have we gotten to the point where everyone should have one? Yeah. And we talked about how you know they steal your packages from your front door. Uh, I read this news story that I thought was – it was funny because we were kind of talking about it. And it says uh, it t took place in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it said Tulsa police said uh, thieves are now stepping their game up when it comes to stealing packages. They are no longer stealing your packages off your front porch. They are stealing the Amazon vans themselves filled with packages. Yeah. So when the driver gets out of the car to walk up to you, so the, they have a car that follows the van. Yep. The van parks, runs up to your front doorstep to to drop off the package, they get they, their partner gets out of the car, runs up to the vehicle, and just takes off in the vehicle and steals the whole package. And they they wind up just driving to another spot, unload the packages into a truck, and then they just leave the van on the side of the road. 100%. That sucks, huh? I'm almost thinking 
why hasn't someone thought of this like years ago? Like this seems to me like a natural progression of the thieves. Like you, you could pro those Amazon, they run out of the car and they're not paying attention. The car's running half the time. You don't even have to find a key. The car's already running. I bet it's probably happened. But the fact that the, the company UPS or federal express or DHL or whatever can probably cover that up a lot quicker or easier than a ring doorbell. Yeah, I, th I think you're probably right. Uh, hey, I don't know about you, but I would like to do a couple SMRT stories. I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. Are we in Florida? All right, so this is SMRT. Yeah, oh, you knew it. It was. I figured it's been too long since we've done a Florida story. Uh, and since this category is basically all about Florida people, I had to throw one in. So this is dumb people doing dumb things. Usually it involves getting arrested. So our first story of the day, it's our return of Florida man, or in this case, Florida woman. So, Chris, let's say you were a teacher. Uh, God forbid that ever uh, happens because yeah. uh, I, I, I fear for our children. Wait, 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 but wait, wait. I could be a college say you, teacher. College teacher would be okay. No, you couldn't. Oh, okay. No, you'd have to be able to read. Uh, so uh, let's say you're a teacher and uh, let's say they're preschool kids, maybe kindergarten. Kill let's me now. To... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kill, Please kill me now. Kill me let's now. say you have to send a note home to the parent. Uh, what, what would you do in your, if you're in that situation? Uh, write it on a piece of paper and, and, and put it in their backpack and just say something. You know, All right. I'm going to stop you right there because you've already done better than Florida woman. Oh, wow. Mom dis discovered a daycare worker had written a note on the belly of her toddler in large black Sharpie letters oh to God. send a note home. What so if you say? look at the what picture, they, they literally, it is a baby. This baby still wears diapers. The daycare worker used a Sharpie to write on the baby's stomach, you need to send more diapers with her. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the I director a of the Children's Education Center said the message was written on the child on Monday and is a breach of professional ethics, and that person was fired. Um, how mad, how livid would you be if your child came home with sh a Sharpie message on their skin? Uh, I would be really, really, really pissed. I'd probably go down there and I'd probably punch someone. But be me being me, but me being me thinks that they lost a huge opportunity. Instead of using Sharpie, they should have used shit. <laughs> and say, out of diapers, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> that would have been way better. I mean, but, I, I, but here's the thing. I mean, okay. How, write it on a piece of paper and pi uh, pin it to the kid's sweatshirt. I mean, there's there's like a million other ways you could handle this. I I don't know how many choices I would have had to have gone through before I would get to Sharpie on the on the stomach. Apparently in Florida, that's their go to. That's like choice number one. I think for me, that'd be like choice four hundred and ninety seven. I literally could have thought of a million and a half ways. Here's a novel idea. Text the parent. I got a question. Are they really depending on this yeah. preschooler to send the message home? Is it just not been given to the parents? They're like, oh, we're going to write it on your stomach now because you don't tell your mom By and dad. Preschooler is not the preschooler is not going to drive home or ride their bike home. The parent has to come and pick the preschooler up. I know. Why not tell the parent when they arrive? That's hilarious. That's so funny. Like, yeah, we could literally go. We could go on for three hours just naming different scenarios that would have been a better option than writing on Sharpie on the chest. Uh, I got a second one for you. This is All a right. second SMRT story. This one takes place out in your neck of the woods, which is why I wanted to read it. Uh, a little farther than you, but still out your way. In Indio, California, uh, police are on the lookout for a thief who broke into a YMCA through the ceiling. Security footage captured the man kicking through the ductwork in the ceiling of the YMCA Child Development Center. He then drops to the floor to break into the cash register, stealing all of the money inside before making his daring escape. The only problem? The cash register at the YMCA Child Development is a fake. It's a toy filled with fake money for the kids to pretend they're playing cash register. <laughs> he really so now we play the game that we should be better at this round of what type of drug was this person on? <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with uh, this definitely seems like a meth head. So I'm going to go with meth. I'm going to have to say I would agree probably meth. <laughs> and but wait, see, here's the thing. 
he opened the register. So he, first of all, didn't notice that it was a toy register. That's that's part one. Part two, of all the places you're going to break into, the YMCA is not what I think of when I think of high value uh, 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 dollar plays. And then part three, you're telling me this person didn't know that the money was fake? Because it's not like they opened it, saw the money was fake, and then ran. According to the video and the, and the article, they took the money and ran with it. Wow. They didn't even look at it. They just grabbed it and ran. Just grabbed it. Oh, my grab God. And go. Okay, so I have a question for you. Now, I, I just read a story earlier today of a similar story where a, a meth head was busted for breaking in somewhere. Um, but I have a question. Is, is this the same person? Um, the person <laughs> I'm looking at is Goldberg from the original Mighty Ducks movie. <laughs> Man, this guy, <laughs> this guy fell hard. Oh, Jesus. 12 uh -oh. hours ago, he was arrested for burglary while on meth. And he looks... Like, you should Google just Goldberg, Mighty Ducks, and look at the news. I mean, come on. It's the same story, except not a YMCA almost. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes. I just I just Googled photo. Good Lord, what happened to him? Oh, man, he lost that weight, but he should have stopped about 50 pounds ago. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Wow. Right. Well, uh, he might go on the death pool for uh, next year because he does not look good. I hope he gets the help uh, he needs. Well, that rounds up. That rounds up SMRT. I got one more round of stuff for you, uh, a segment that we like to call Love Hate. Then I just hate you, and I hate your ass face. I hate you, Ron Burgundy. I hate you. No, I don't hate Balboa, but I pity the fool. Would it interest you to know how much I hate you, Johnny? I hate you so much that I would destroy myself to take you down with me. I just hate your ass face. Yes, that's exactly how it goes. <laughs> All right, Chris, I got a couple for us to choose from today uh, on our love hate. This is people we love to hate. Okay. We got to pick one. That's a versus kind of a thing. So, uh, first up, people whose cell phones are always either out of battery or low on battery. You know those people who their their cell phone battery is always at like twelve percent. Yeah, I've married one. Yeah, I think I married one too. Versus. People who take forever to return texts. Uh, this one's cut and dry for me. Uh, I think the people that whose phones are always at a battery are like, and because they're always making excuses like, hey, can I buy a charger? Or, you know, I, I was just so busy today. Like, you probably sat down somewhere for more than 20 minutes. Plug your damn phone in and charge it. There's outlets everywhere. Yeah. There's outlets everywhere. Under your seat at restaurants, under the bars where you hang your coat. Like, they're everywhere. But the people that, at work. Yeah, like and, and by the way, and by the way, do you not plug your phone in at nighttime at your bed stand or you know on the side of your bed? Like I, I don't understand w how hard is it to plug in your phone before you go to bed? Or every car plugs into a phone now, so the phone charges on the way when you're driving. And if you're Southern California, you're driving a lot, so there's no excuse. There's no excuse now. Well, and and while I hate the people who take forever to return are really bad at this. I send them a text at like 8 a.m. on Monday morning and like 3 p.m. on Wednesday afternoon, they return the text. And it drives me nuts and I hate it. However, at least with that person, oh, maybe they're working or maybe, uh, you know, they're in the movie, they're at a movie theater and they can't return a text or, or whatever. There's at least some excuse, but you're right. When you have a phone that's consistently out of battery, now it's happened to all of us where our cell phone's running low and in a panic we're trying to plug it in, yep. but it's not the norm. It happens to me once every three months. I'm talking about the people who literally every time you talk to them, and you know what I've noticed? It's the same people who have cracked phone screens. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 100%. Like, again, I married one. What's funny is I have that Life360 app, which tells me every time my wife or my daughter's phone is below 10%, and it goes off every day. <laughs> I that would be an alert that would dr I'd have to turn off that notification because it would drive me insane. What's funny is about the people that take forever to return texts. I used to not care or I used to be mad at those people or whatever. But now I'm just like, you know what? If you needed something so fast, you should have called me. So I think that's more lazy on the person that didn't get the return text uh, fault if they had something they needed to wrap up or whatever. But other than that, if I text someone and they don't get back to me right away, whatever, I'll see it later. I, I, I agree with you. So that, that that's one of the persons. I got one more for you. All right. Okay. Uh, we're this is this is a commercials category. Oh. What do you love to hate more, medicine slash drug commercials or car commercials? Because at this point, that's all they show on TV. There's a medicine commercial or a car commercial. If there's ten commercials on TV, eight of them are going to be one of these two. So which one do you love to hate the most? 
Uh, I think I hate the car commercials more because you, there's not a whole lot more you can do to a car that I can afford that's going to make me go, <gasps> but those drug commercials, man, it's always good for a chuckle when they say anal leakage. It is. <laughs> anal leakage might be the same grace. But with those medicine commercials, the drug commercials, I hate how the law says that they have to – okay, first of all, here's what bugs me the most about it. Why the hell does there need to be drug commercials? I can't get that prescription without a doctor. Agreed. So if you want to advertise to the doctor in like a, a publication for the medical journal or if you want to send a, a cute little blonde sales reps out to go flirt with the doctor to get them to prescribe, you know, Olestra or whatever the hell, the, you know, Xanax <laughs> or whatever, that's fine. But why the hell are you advertising to me when I do – I am not in control, control. I can't go down to the store and buy this product. You're advertising to someone who has no influence over buying the product. And then this regulation of they got to list all the damn side effects, half the commercial is them reading off side effects while some – and it's always – you ever notice any of the drugs that have to do where there's a woman in the commercial, the woman's always play like she's kickboxing or or she's like aggressively riding her mountain bike down the side of a mountain. It's like <laughs> apparently these drugs make you the fittest person in the world because I've known a lot of women in my life. I've never known a woman who goes to like kickbox and like punch the heavy bag. And oh, by the way, I have advanced herpes and severe to mo moderate plaque psoriasis, but it's a good thing I could still punch this punching bag and like go out with my girlfriends at night. Like every single commercial for that is the same. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. I love all the disclaimers that are on there. And they, they always start the very first one. And my kids. My my nine year old daughter and my eleven year old son always ask us, but the very first disclaimer is always, if you're allergic to Tribeca, don't take it. How the hell do I yeah, know if duh. I'm allergic to it or not? And <laughs> without no, taking it, no, you shit. find out after you've taken it. <laughs> when you when you balloon up and you go into anaphylactic shock, your wife goes, "Hey, Chris, I think you're allergic to that. Let's stop taking that now." Oh, by the way, get in the car. <laughs> we have to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> but and it's always it's <laughs> you're right the other one that bothers me about those is it's always if you have severe to moderate it's like yes if i had very very light symptoms i wouldn't need to go get the freaking drug because it's a very of course it's severe to moderate plus you think i'm just gonna go oh man i've been waiting for that commercial to come on i have severe to moderate plaque psoriasis in a room full of people that you're gonna talk to no, nobody says anything yes. out loud. <laughs> it's not like you see the Mountain and Dew commercial and you're like, oh my God, I could totally use a code red Mountain Dew. No, you're not. Oh, exactly. Yes. Propecia. Hey, hook it up. <laughs> well, with car commercials, what's bugged me about car commercials is A, the absolute, like, okay, when I go to buy a car, I mean, if I'm going to toss popcorn on the floor and get mad and yell and scream, we know that. But um, when I go to buy a car, it's I'm sitting there looking at the price, right? And I'm thinking of how much do they got to pay this idiot salesman who did nothing? Okay, that's a chunk of change. And then how much did they have to pay for advertising? How much of what I'm paying for this car is to put a car commercial on TV every 15 seconds? And if you ever notice, they don't tell you what the car actually does anymore. It's all about feelings. It's all about Subaru cares about dogs. And, you know, one day you're going to give this kid to this car to your kid and she's going to go on and give it to her kid. And Subaru all about good feelings, good times. It's like, I don't know. How big is the engine? How many cup holders does it have? Does it get Sirius XM? Does it does it go zero to 60 and three? Remember the car commercials when we were younger? It was go to, go zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. It's got a Hemi engine. It's got 18 cup holders. It literally has a beer fridge under the seat. You want to, <laughs> you want to, 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 you want to have your uh, sex doll ride in the passenger seat? Well, we got a special thing for that. Blah blah. Now it's like all about. Uh, did you know if you drive this car, we'll donate twenty dollars to a fund that like regrows trees in the Amazon? Or it's it's always something like that. They never actually tell you what the car does. It's always the car driving on some back road somewhere uh, where there's no traffic. Y you want to be realistic? Car commercials. Uh, show someone sitting in traffic for 45 minutes. They're sweaty. Their hair's out of place because they're stressed out. They're honking at the person in front of them and go, Subaru, the car's really comfortable when you're sitting in traffic and we got a great air conditioner. I'd buy that car. But I have a question for car. you. How long was your drive home yeah. today? Because you needed to get that out. Yeah, I did. Uh, 
the only... I hate that in Los Angeles, people are either going eight miles an hour or 80 miles an hour, and there's no in between. In fact, the people who drive in between are psychopaths. <laughs> if you're driving 50 miles an hour in LA, you should be castrated. You should be put on a helicopter with Kobe Bryant. Oh. I hope you die in a fiery crash because if there's no traffic, your ass better be going 80. And if there's a lot of traffic, we're all going eight miles an hour, so there's no point in trying to go 80 because those people piss me off too. There's literally only those two extremes. If you're driving 50, you're a psychopath. This uh, this episode of We Should Be Better, this is sponsored by Subaru, uh, bringing family together and Eric's temper up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one last thing on the Kobe Bryant thing before we end. Uh, you know who's responsible for Kobe Bryant's death? All of the politicians in California, in L.A., because they played that interview uh, that's come out on Co with Kobe Bryant saying why he decides to take helicopters. And he literally just said, listen, the traffic is so bad and it takes so long that, you know, why not take helicopters and this, this and this? So, you know what? Gavin Newsom and Mayor Villaraigosa and all of these people that have ran the state for the last few decades, guess what? The homeless is out of control and the traffic sucks and you've done nothing to fix it and now you've killed kobe bryant they did rest in peace kobe they did I rest wish, in peace i wish i had a two percent of your bank account oh my gosh yes i know right um yeah. well that about wraps it up please remember to rate and review and recommend to a friend this is how this podcast survives we don't do any advertising so from uh, your mouth to your friend's ears is how we're going to uh, keep going and go to this is funner.com yeah, and follow us on Twitter. He's at Sinatra's Rat Pack. Make sure you are tweeting at Eric. Um, tell him to make sure he takes his pills at night because I don't think he took them last night. And this is what happens when he doesn't take his pills. So make sure you're tweeting at him, and I'm Chris underscore Donovan. All right, everybody. Have yourself a good <laughs> week, and we'll see you soon. Catch you later. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch 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 -chumba. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.